It's that time of the year again, tax season. And of course, we're all hoping we don't need to pay more in taxes than we need to. So what can we do to pay less in taxes? In this video, I want to cover 10 effective ways to lower your taxes so you can keep more money in your pocket rather than forking it over to Uncle Sam. Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. Before we get into some ways to lower taxes, let me talk briefly about how income taxes work here in the United States. In America, we have what is commonly called a progressive tax system. A progressive tax involves a tax rate that increases or progresses as taxable income increases. It imposes a lower tax rate on low income earners and a higher tax rate on those with higher income. Think of it like a set of stairs. A portion of your income is left at each step and taxed at the flat rate tied to that tax bracket. If your income exceeds the threshold for one stair, that amount will progress to the next stair, which will be taxed at the next higher rate, which currently tops out at 37%. Put another way, your marginal tax bracket or the highest tax rate you fall into applies only to the amount of your taxable income above the minimum threshold. For income below that limit, you pay the same amount of federal income tax as everyone else, even if they earn less overall. You might hear someone say they're in the 24% tax bracket because their income falls between those thresholds. That's called marginal tax bracket. It's called marginal because only the portion of income is taxable at that rate. Let me give you a quick example. Let's say that you married filing jointly makes a combined income of $200,000. According to the updated 2023 federal income tax bracket, you're in the 24% tax bracket. However, the amount that is taxed at 24% is actually only the amount above $190,750 and below $200,000 in this case. $200,000 minus $190,750 equals $9,250. And times that 24% is $2,220. From $197.50 all the way down to $89,450, you're taxed at the next lower level of tax bracket, 22%, and subsequently 12% and 10%. So the key to paying less in taxes is to lower your taxable income, ideally into that next tax bracket. It's worth noting though that the federal income tax bracket that we discussed doesn't include state and local taxes, property taxes or sales tax. Social Security and Medicare taxes, collectively known as FICA taxes, are a separate calculation. All right, with that said, what are some ways to lower your taxes? Let me share with you 10 in this video. The number one way to pay less in taxes is to contribute to your retirement account. This is by far the most common and easiest way to reduce your taxable income. When you contribute money into a traditional 401k or an IRA account, what it does is it reduces your overall taxable income, which in turn reduces the federal tax that you owe. For example, let's say that you make a gross $100,000 a year. If you don't contribute anything to your retirement account, you will owe federal taxes against that full $100,000. This comes out to about $18,000 in federal taxes for a single filer. But if you were to, let's say, contribute $20,000 into your retirement account, your taxable income is reduced to $80,000. Now, you only owe about $13,000 in federal taxes versus the $18,000. A $5,000 savings because you decided to contribute to a retirement account. And that's not the best part. And by contributing into your retirement account, your money is also growing tax-free until your retirement. A double win. If you aren't taking advantage of contributing into a retirement account, you're definitely missing out. The max contribution limit for 401k in 2023 is $22,500, and the IRA is $6,500. If you have the ability, max out these accounts so that you can not only reduce your taxes, but set yourself up for success in retirement as well. The number two way to pay less in taxes is to defer income. Now, this may not be possible for everyone, but if you own your own business or your employer is flexible, this is worthwhile looking into. Deferring income from the current year into the next year is a way to delay paying taxes and reduce your current year's taxable income. For example, let's say you're an employee and you're due a year-end bonus. You can ask your employer if they're willing to push that payment into the next year. A caveat with this strategy though is that you can save taxes in the current year, but deferred income may cause tax issues the following year, especially if you find yourself in a higher tax bracket. So you want to balance out any current tax savings with future taxes you have to pay by projecting out your future income. However, if your priority is to reduce this year's taxes, the less income you can realize in the current year, the better. The number three way to pay less in taxes is to contribute to a flexible spending account, also known as FSA. Most often you enroll as a part of your employer's benefits package. Once you enroll, the FSA amount is deducted from your payroll automatically into a separate account, which can then be used to pay for expenses running from insurance copays to over-the-counter medication. One downside of an FSA is that they have an expiration date. So if you don't spend all the money within the FSA within a specific year, the amount is forfeited. Many employers also offer FSA for both healthcare and dependent care. Dependent care could be used not only for your kids' school expenses, they can also be used for elder care as well if you're caring for your aging parents. Check with your employer on the details, but this is a really good low-hanging fruit that you want to take advantage of to lower your taxable income. For us, given we have two young kids that attended private daycare, preschool and after school the past 10 years, 
the FSA allowed us to literally save us thousands of dollars in taxes over that time period. The number four way to pay less in taxes is to contribute to a health savings account, also known as HSA. Now, a key is you need a high deductible health care plan to qualify. But if you do, HSA is an excellent way to lighten your tax load. I speak more about the power of HSA in this video here, but in a nutshell, it is a savings account for your medical expenses. Now, there are a few key benefits to this I want to highlight. One is that when you contribute money into an HSA, similar to a retirement account, your taxable income is reduced by that amount. The contribution limit for 2023 is 3850 for self-only coverage and 7750 for family plans. This means when as a family, you contribute 7750 into an HSA, you don't pay taxes on that amount. And it gets even better. The money within HSA, if invested, which I highly recommend you do, will not only grow tax-free, but you can withdraw tax-free for any qualified medical expenses. But wait, there's more. There is no time cap for HSA, which means you can hold on to your medical receipts from 10 years ago, and if you want to withdraw tax-free money today, or 10 years from now, you can. Now, a caveat here is that you do need a high deductible health insurance plan to qualify. So make sure you check on that. But the bottom line is that if you're eligible, don't miss out on this great account that not only will reduce your taxes, but increase your net worth as well. The number five way to pay less in taxes is to contribute to charitable donations. Charitable donations are tax deductible and they don't even have to be cash. If you ever donated clothes or household items because you're cleaning out your garage, you can deduct them against your income. Make sure you get a receipt though. If you regularly donate items to Goodwill or the Salvation Army, this is an easy way to reduce your taxes while at the same time getting rid of items that you don't use anymore. In addition, any money donation you make to your church or your favorite nonprofit are also tax deductible. Similarly, make sure you get a receipt though. There is a hack that I've used if I don't have a specific nonprofit I want to donate money to yet, but I still want to take advantage of the deductions that come from charitable contributions. It is donating money to a donor advice fund, also known as DAF for short. Donor advice funds work like a mini foundation that allows you to contribute money like any other investment account, and you get a tax deduction the year you contribute money to. If you want to learn more about these DAFs, check out my video here about donor advice funds where I go into more detail. The number six way to pay less in taxes is my personal favorite, and that is to deduct business expenses. Usually business owners and self-employed taxpayers are able to use a much wider range of tax reduction strategies than individual taxpayers because of tax deductible business expenses. Some of the most common business deductions available include the following. Office supplies, shipping, advertising, website fees, professional publications, and even a percentage of your home internet charge. When I was working full-time and running my YouTube and website on the side, I was able to deduct all the educational books and camera equipment because they were all contributing to improving my business. To be honest, I would have purchased those books and camera gears regardless since I love reading and new tech devices. But having a business was a great way to get a tax write-off on these expenses. Another one of my favorite business expenses I can write off is when I can combine business travel expenses with vacation. When we can combine a vacation with a business trip, we reduce the vacation cost by deducting the percentage of expenses spent for business purposes. This could include airfare and part of our hotel bill, of course, proportionate to the time spent on business activities. There are a lot of nuances to deducting business-related expenses, so you might want to work with an accountant on this, but the IRS rules are in favor of helping entrepreneurs get their businesses up and running. The number seven way to pay less in taxes is to make our homes more energy efficient. When we invest money to make our home more energy efficient, we can take advantage of tax credit called the Energy Efficient Home Improvement Credit. Prior to its extension expansion through the Passage of the Inflation Reduction Act, the Energy Efficient Home Improvement Credit amounted to a lifetime credit of $500 through December 31st, 2022, and had a different name, the Non-Business Energy Property Credit. The Inflation Reduction Act amended the credit to be worth up to $1,200 per year for qualifying property placed in service on or after January 1st, 2023 and before January 1st, 2033, and gave it a new name, the Energy Efficient Home Improvement Credit. Because the new credit has an annual limit rather than a lifetime limit, if you can manage to spread out your qualifying home improvements over the 10-year life of the credit, you can receive up to $12,000 back on your taxes as compared to only $500 allowed under the previous credit. Not only will making your home more energy efficient allow you to take advantage of this credit, you'll likely be able to lower your utility bills as well. If you live in an older home like myself, consider looking at your windows or the HVAC unit to see if they could be replaced with more modern, efficient units. Again, there are a lot of nuances to these kind of credits, so you might want to work with an accountant, but at the end of the day, the IRS wants you to make your home more energy efficient. The number eight way to pay less in taxes is to sell your losers. Reporting losses and capital investments. Also known as tax loss harvesting, this is a great year and strategy for smart investors. When you sell your investment to realize a loss, these losses can be used to offset capital gains taxes dollar for dollar, reducing your overall tax liability. 
If your overall losses exceed your gains, you can deduct up to $3,000 from your other taxable income. And even better, the losses that exceed that amount can be carried forward for future years. One caveat is that once you sell and you buy back the same stock within 30 days, your deduction will be withdrawn by the IRS. So you want to be very careful about using this strategy. The number nine way to pay less in taxes is to get credit for higher education. The government offers valuable tax credits to offset the cost of higher education. The American Opportunity Tax Credit can be claimed for the first four years of college and provides a maximum credit of $2,500 per student per year. Since it's a credit, the amount is deducted from whatever tax you might owe the government. Also, the lifetime learning credit is great for adults wanting to boost their education and training. This credit is worth up to $2,000 per year and helps pay for college and education expenses that can improve our overall marketability. The number 10 way to pay less in taxes is to save for college. Setting aside money for our children's tuition can lower our tax bill. A popular option is to make contributions to a 529 plan, a savings account operated by a state or education institution. You can't deduct your contributions on your federal income taxes, but you might be able to on your state return if you're putting money in your state's 529 plan. Also, although the contributions themselves might not be deductible, interest that accrues in the account is tax-free, federally, as well as being tax-free in many states. In other words, when the money is withdrawn to pay college expenses, it is not taxed. Be aware though, there might be gift tax consequences if your contributions plus any other gifts to a particular beneficiary exceed $16,000 in 2022 and $17,000 in 2023. Thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the 529 College Savings Plan and why it might be a great option to save for your kid's college, check out my video here. Until next time, all the best.